and to Ondona, where the state governor and the candidate of the All Progressives Congress in the upcoming governorship election in the state, Rotimi Akaridolu, on Thursday condemned the aggressive and violent act that occurred between members of his party and the People's Democratic Party on Wednesday. Akaridolu described the violence that occurred in Oba Akoko, Akoko Southwest local government area, as unwarranted and unfortunate resulting in burning and damage of campaign vehicles of both parties. In a statement signed by the spokesperson of Akeridole and Aiedatiwa campaign organization, Olabode Olatunde, the governor warned political gladiators against disrupting the peace currently being enjoyed in the state with less than a month to the governorship election in the state. We are now joined by Femi Lawson, who is a public affairs analyst, to take a look at this development. Good to have you, Mr. Lawson. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. And very quickly, uh, what's the update from Ondo? What do we know so far? Well, uh, it's very unfortunate that uh, at a time that every stakeholder you know, within the electoral chain, uh, of course, expecting that uh, elections would not be won, since this is a purely you know, civil process. A lot of participants in the process are still engaging in violence. And I think uh, what has happened in Ondo State yesterday should be a wake-up call, not only to the politicians, but to the security agencies on the need to begin to punish perpetrators of election violence. We cannot continue to have you know, all sort of killing, destruction, you know, and a chaotic situation like we witnessed yesterday in Obakoko, mm. just because of an entirely civil process of election. It is good that uh, the governor of the state has condemned this, and I also think the security agencies must immediately move in and begin to arrest and prosecute whoever is found to be involved in any form of violence as far as uh, the preparation for the election is concerned. It is a process where the people should be allowed to peacefully you know, elect their leader, not at gunpoint, as some people are trying to make it to look like. It is, it is important that you mentioned the people, because I'm just going to ask you that with all of this chaotic situation uh, happening, what does it mean to the people just a month away to the election? Well, the, the, the utmost intention of perpetrators of violence during periods of electioneering like this is to, you know, scare the people. It's a scare tactic. On, you know, yes. So it's an attempt to, you know, change the way people from you know, genuinely exercising their franchise. It's an attempt to give the responsibility to determine who emerges as winner of an election to the thugs and their sponsors. And I think the security agencies must listen, you know, to the chief security officer of the state, who is the governor, who has called for an investigation into the act of violence. And nobody should be scared, irrespective of whatever political party they belong to. Whoever has been found to perpetrate violence should be And the people must be allowed, because they are the greatest stakeholders in the democratic project. The people must be allowed to determine who leads them, not the barrels of the gun. The people must not allow these people who are perpetrating violence to, you know, to choose a governor for them. The people must be allowed, and these people must be you know, placed at the center of the decision to determine who becomes the governor. And I think the leading political parties in the state, uh, the All Progressive Congress, the People's Democratic Party, have very critical role to play in talking and warning is to their supporters because you know none of these major political parties you know can be you know you know really excused from an antecedent of having some of their supporters trying to be violent just because they need to demonstrate their loyalty or their commitment to the process. I think beyond what the security agencies are doing, the political parties must seriously come out and condemn you know whatever action their supporters are taking that are inimical to the you know, smooth democratic process you know, ahead of October 10 election in the state. Mr. Lawson, if we project just a little bit into the future and to ask, with this kind of tension, what should the atmosphere for the election day even be? What do you expect? 
we must begin to look even beyond the election day if we want to consider the implication of what may likely happen if ordinary political campaigns that should have been an opportunity to market programs and manifesto of the political party to the people have not been turned into war where guns, machetes, and all sort of weapons are now freely used. Then it begins to, you know, call for serious concern about what may likely be the outcome of the election. And we have continually said this. The only way out of this is for this country to criminalize all sort of election violence until we begin to arrest and prosecute people for perpetrating election violence, we will continue to have this kind of scenario, not only in Ondo State, but in future elections in Nigeria. The Nigerian government has never been serious about criminalizing election violence. And that is why people could freely display all sort of anarchy like we witnessed today, you know, in the name of election. So it's very important at this time that ahead of the election, the security agencies, particularly the police, must come out in clear, strong terms, you know, and begin to prosecute people who are found to be involved in election violence. And that is the only way we can even, you know, deter people from perpetrating violence on, on October 10th. Because if this continues, there is every possibility that these perpetrators may want to unleash terror on the innocent people on October 10th when the election will be held. So it is important that we begin to deal with perpetrators of electoral violence and that is the only way we can deter, you know, them, even from disrupting the main election itself. All right. And if we move away from, you know, uh, what the government or those who are responsible for the people should do, let's talk a little bit more about the people. It is usually a question of candidates A's uh, supporters against candidates B supporters. What can be done to educate electorates not to be put at the center of such political clashes, you know, all the time? People must understand that they are the biggest stakeholder in the electoral process. The people must take ownership of the electoral process and not allow politicians or their supporters, who are very minute. I always say this, if you combine the membership of these political parties together, I mean the registered members of these political parties, in totality, do not measure up to 20% of people who votes to determine the outcome of an election. So why are we leaving the strength, the relevance, the importance of the large, larger number of people that constitute the electorate in the whole of this? So it is now important for the people themselves to wake up and understand that they are the owners of the process. Democracy, like we know, is the government of the people, by the people, for the people. It is not the government of some public officials or their thugs or their supporters. It is not even the government of political parties. Democracy is the government of the people, and the people must take ownership by ensuring that they do not allow political talks and their sponsors to deny them the right to elect their leaders during elections. It is very important, and I think this is what the people must begin to work on. Ensure that they condemn violence, they resist any attempt by political talks or their sponsors to deny them their franchise, and they must continually emphasize their ownership of the process. Mm. Thank you very much, uh, Femi Larson, Public Affairs Analyst. You've put it very well there. The people are indeed the owners of the process. Do keep safe out there, sir.